Whenever, okay, watch my eyes. Whenever we look at a, a uh, strip like this, it's called an optikinetic strip, OPK. When we do this, just watch my eyes, what they do. Okay, can you see my eyes? What are they doing? Fluttering back and forth. Fluttering back and forth, okay? This is the neat thing about this brain, and I just want to, I think it's fascinating. The eyes actually move in conjugate, and they will come from this side and fixate on a target, okay? That fixation is the frontal lobe. That frontal lobe will actually then transfer to the parietal lobe, the back portion, and will actually pursue across until that target gets out of my field of view and then my frontal lobe will quickly try to fixate on a new target again. Okay? It will pursue parietal lobe across until I have to find a target again and that refixation again is frontal lobe. So we're doing a frontal parietal, frontal parietal, frontal parietal, frontal parietal pursuit with the brain. Well frontal lobe is what we want, right? We're using the eyes through the thalamus and we're getting this whole stimulation of what we call, again, the dopaminergic activating center of the brain. Isn't that neat? So if we actually run something in front of the eyes, but in this case, this direction, we're getting a bilateral frontal parietal pursuit mechanism, which is going to stimulate these really densely populated dopaminergic centers of the brain. Okay? So this type of an activity Okay, if I actually have, again, this in front of me, and I'm pursuing that upward, watch my eyes again, we're just seeing that each one of those pass right there in front of the eyes, boom, 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 okay, and you see my eyes go, boom, 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 just like that, we're actually stimulating these centers of the brain. So now we don't have to give so much Mirapax, or Levodopa, or Cinemet, to stimulate that, we're actually giving the brain what it needs, an exercise. And we're doing it through this dopaminergic activating center of the brain, right through this pathway. Okay? I think it's phenomenal. And I, I, I don't know, I get kind of passionate about it, because I think it's just so exciting. Because you can actually take this type of a thing then, and just do this for the person, and just run that in front of their eyes, do six passes, and do that six times a day for them, okay? It's not that big of a deal. Now, as the eye going this way, it's going to flutter sideways. Does this it is flutter up and down? When that's what we that want, way? yep. So you're supposed to just let your eyes see each of the reds, and they'll actually move with that. Yep, that's what we want right there, okay? Perfect. And just see each of the reds right there. Now, if you get it too close to them, they're going to be cross-eyed, right? And you'll actually be in what's called the optic blind spot. You have a blind spot that's about 14 inches away. So... Don't get it in there so close that they're cross-eyed and blind-spotted. You want to keep it out that, that's far enough away that you actually see their eyes responding. Then take it away, then bring it back up again, and let it go right in front of their eyes. Now, here's the neat thing about this. When we do that correctly, and we do it consistently, we'll actually start to see a change in the quiver of the chin with the palmamental reflex, but you'll also see a change in the woodness of gait. Now, what did we talk about two weeks ago associated with antioxidants and recycling of neurotransmitters in the brain? It's a real key pathway that starts with glue and ends in to thiol. <laughs> yes, the glutathione pathway. Oh my goodness. You guys are amazing. Okay. So the glutathione pathways are essential to brain function. And Dr. Perlmutter out of Florida, the medical neurologist, actually gives glutathione injections. Now, if I had uh, time, actually, actually what we'll do is put the video of Dr. Perlmutter's glutathione injections on our uh, website, because I want people to see this. Dr. Perlmutter will actually have a person with Parkinsonism walk down a hallway, and this is how this one fellow's walking like this, okay? He gets down to the end of the hall, and he tries to turn, and he's turning he finally gets turned around and comes back. And Dr. Perlmutter gives him an injection of glutathione. And in the next series, 15 minutes later, this is the guy. And he turns around, he's like this. He does that too. And you just go, 
Are you kidding me? Is this staged? It's fascinating because all of a sudden, this pathway is recycling neurotransmitters and giving that integrity or that boost to the brain. Okay, it's phenomenal. And how long does that last? It lasts for about two to three days. That's the yeah. downside. But what did we talk about can actually build the glutathione pathways? Remember, N-acetylcysteine, NAC, acetyl L-carnitine, alpha-ketoglutarate, alpha-lipoic acid. Remember all those things in resveratrol? Remember those? They come just rolling off your tongue now, right? <laughs> or we can do something really simple, and we can just use something called NeuroPTX that has it all in it. Okay? We can do something very simple, and we can actually feed the gut and improve the integrity of the liver and the gut and build back the glutathione pathway. What else can we do if you don't want to always get the in intramuscular injections? We can give our loved one transdermal delivery of glutathione by using oxycell and putting it there on the neck and giving them that feedback. Okay? That's kind of neat. So we can actually feed them precursors to building these pathways, do an exercise to help to build back the pathways, and then give them some targets to reduce their risk of fall so they're actually moving again and encourage that movement. Okay? So that's our Parkinson presentation for tonight. Now we could go into a lot deeper stuff. We can talk about adjusting the side of the trimmer. We actually make deep adjustments because that stimulates very strongly these pathways as well. So that side that we see that real strong tremoring on will actually give a strong adjustment to. And when we do a coupled adjustment, it actually stimulates those pathways very strongly as well. Then we do the strips as well and build back the uh, plasticity of the brain. Okay? Pretty fascinating. Right? Can I ask Question? something that's a little bit off but sort of connected? You were talking about that black part there. Yes. And it telling the brain to stop doing something that the sock is up. Yep. How does that relate to obsessive compulsive disorder? Because that's kind yes. of what it is, is that the body thinks Obsesses. I'm not done with this thought. Correct. So it, would that be fixed by that red strip? Can be. Okay. Can be helped by that. Yes, okay. because we want, again, that mechanism to be right. turned off. Because right? forever they never knew what it was, and Correct. the last thing I read, it was the body can't say I'm done with this. Correct. So it keeps. So we're looking at this. Remember... Okay. Movement is the key to brain activity, okay? Think of it this way. Here is when you have your little baby, okay? What does it do? Wah, 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 eat, 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 change my diaper. Wah, 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 eat, 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 change my diaper, okay? Then all of a sudden, baby goes, wah, 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 and da, da, <laughs> right? <laughs> Mama, right? And all of a sudden he starts to do these little push-ups and he starts to get stronger and stronger until he comes here and now it's doggy, right? Ball. And then he goes to this and he says, I want! I want it now! Right? And that movement is actually building a brain. Well, the demise of brain goes the opposite as well. Okay? Who are you? What did you want me to do? Where are we going? Right? I'm hungry. So you see the same progression and digression of brain as we look at that building and also de demise of brain. I think of it this way. When my little kids, when I watch them mature and grow, when they come to my room five times before I've even had a chance to kneel down and pray by the side of my bed in the mornings, they're learning at such an immense and just an incredible rate exponential growth, right? Feed their brain with something besides television because they're learning, right? Give them music opportunities. Um, let them play soccer. Let them play sports. Do something active with them. Don't just stay there. Put them out in the backyard. Tell them not to come in until the sun goes down. Whatever it is you do as a mom, okay, that works for you. As a dad. You're building brains. Yeah, you're building brains. All right. For you as adults, though, again, for our, our ski club, right? Keep skiing. Don't stop. When it, somebody told me a few weeks ago, what's the beauty of living in Heber Valley? Well, you got nine months of snow and three months of poor sledding. <laughs> right? Because, oh, you better like it. Do 
something fun in it. Okay? And the rest of the time, go on your mountain bike and do something else. Or if you don't like this, the snow, go to St. George, Carrie. Have a great time, will you? <laughs> then I'll like That's right. Get down to St. George and get some sun. We might join you. So, there again. Feed the brain and heal the brain. Now, if the brain is 70% fat, what good fat have you eaten today? How did you avocado. feed your brain? Avocado. Great. How did you feed your brain, though? Think about it, all right? Oh, Every day what? we need to feed the brain as well. Have you fed your brain today? All right? That's my question. Because what happens if you starve the brain is the brain gets on fire. Dr. Perlmutter uses that phrase. He says, a brain on fire... Okay, is Parkinsonism. A brain on fire is Alzheimer's disease. And when your brain's on fire, we have got to squelch the fire. The best fire squelcher is glutathione. Okay, this is the antioxidant squelcher. So what's a good brain food then? The essential fats. So a good fish oil, quality fish oil. Okay, um, I like coconut oil. 200 mil milligrams a day fish oil. At minimum. Yeah, closer to 500. It's going to be better. And even up towards toward 1,000, depending on how your body can process it. Olive oil, coconut oil. Okay? Those are, those are the things that I just say feed your brain. Now, plant-based oils, avocado, if you can tolerate it. Okay? Avocado, great. Feed your brain good fats. And from nourishing traditions, take that whole chicken. Don't take the boneless, skinless only meat chicken. Take the whole chicken and boil the whole chicken and make your chicken noodle soup. Yes. Good for you. That's good you fed fat? your brain. Yes. Yeah. Put that whole chicken in there. Boil it. Yes. Go, you chicken fat. Go. Boil it. You can strain it off, but there's going to be good fats left behind. Which nuts are the good nuts? Good nuts are going to be cashews, almonds. Okay. I like those. Don't do peanuts. Especially roasted peanuts, they're a dead nut, and they also cause prostate problems. Okay? So peanuts are not good for you whether you're sensitive to them or not, okay? I'm, I'm not a big, sorry, peanut farmers in America, but uh, I'm not a fan of peanuts. Okay, they're better nuts. So peanut butter's not really Correct. good Correct. Almond stuff. butter is going to be a better choice for you, okay? Much better choice. That's a great question. So your good nuts and seeds sunflower seeds, okay? Not roasted. Pumpkin seeds, excellent source of omegas. Chia seeds for people that can handle them, right? Until you get your appendix out. Okay. So chia seeds, great source of omega fatty acids. In fact, more omega fatty acids in a tablespoon of chia than a serving of salmon. Okay, so chia seeds. Not just for growing the little chia pet. Okay, they're fun. <laughs> it's a nice bonus, yes. <laughs> but eat them as well, okay? So, did you feed your brain? Did you exercise your brain? Meaning, did you exercise your body today? Did you do something that actually required large muscle movements? My kids still are at the age where they love to wrestle, right? My little girl will come in every morning, Dad, let's wrestle, okay? It doesn't matter if I have my shirt and tie on, Dad, let's wrestle, okay? <laughs> Loves to wrestle. So, yeah, I did something for my brain. Thank goodness I have my little girl, right? My wife and I, the best gym pass we ever got was a dog. Because we had to walk the dog every morning and every night. That was the best gym pass we ever had, right? So, have you done something active for your brain today? Have you fed your brain today? Have you fed your spouse's brain today? Have you walked your spouse's brain today? Have you crawled your spouse's brain sometime this week? That's why I like, have you, do you remember the five Tibetans when we showed the five Tibetans? That's a whole body movement. When is the last time that you actually put your hands on the floor and made your nose drag down to the floor and then pulled your body back up? Okay? When's the last time that you did that kind of an activity? Doesn't that look weird? But when's the last time that you actually had weight on your shoulders and your hands? Maybe you don't because it hurts too badly. So then we need to modify it. Get the perfect push-up little thing so you can have your hands in this position and do that same motion. But get your body to actually move again. So right. the movement of the body is exercising the brain. Yes. 
Okay? The movement of the body is the exercise of the brain. Okay? So the five Tibetans, we, we just turn. Okay? We do a little pike. Remember, Carrie, your favorites? Mm -hmm. Okay? We do the tabletops like this. And this isn't necessarily in order. You do the little motions like a prayer. Okay? And then you do the little downward dog or whatever the sunrise salutation. Mm -hmm. And then back up. Okay? Okay, will you, will you repeat those really, really fast? Mm -hmm. I won't. If I repeat them too fast, they're on the website. Get, they're on the website, but I'll, I'll, oh, okay. I'll write them for you. It's okay. I'll, I'll write them for you, okay? No, that's okay? So you can see them. So, okay. so playing chess is an exercise in the brain. You know what, though? The body movement is exercise reading? in the brain, right? Correct. But reading and, and games of, of skill and things like that are still exercise in the brain. But they aren't. Look. So is this, right? Am I exercising my brain? Yeah, to one area. When you move, you're exercising the whole brain, right? Exercise the whole brain, not just one part of it. We're so lopsided in our activities, right? So the